Okay, uh, 2018, New Year. I've encouraged people to examine carefully last year. Look at our uh, our mistakes. Anybody make any mistakes in 2017? I did. Let's think about them, confess them, repent of them, and then uh, look forward to 2018. You, uh, I don't particularly believe in New Year's resolutions because you can't, the things you resolve to do, you quickly don't do. Have you found that already? There's been many people who have made New Year's resolutions uh, and it's just been a day into it. We're in the second. They already broke them. The way to live is by faith, not by resolution. Because you might resolve it in in your heart, in your head, but the problem is the devil is much smarter and much stronger than you are, and he'll win. But he can't beat the devil. So what we do in the new year anytime, day by day, we live by faith, not by resolve. You can be, I mean, the devil will beat you. He's beat me, he's beat you, but by faith. I, I've been finding just lately... When I, did you ever uh, hey, did you ever get to the point when you're uh, you know when you're going to sin, don't you? Because you're thinking about it. When you go smoke that cigarette, Sandy had a, a lollipop in her mouth. This morning. I said, "Oh, good girl, Sandy, you, you quit smoking. You using lollipops now." She says, for this moment. <laughs> but instead of, instead of smoking your next cigarette, why don't you just by faith say, God handle this, you won't smoke. Or your next drink, or your next evil thought, whatever that may be. You know, you get a warning before you think evil, you know that? You get, a, you get a warning before you smoke a cigarette. You get a warning before you drink a beer. Uh, now, first of all, if you're not saved, you need to be saved by faith. For by grace are we saved through faith, not that of yourself. It's a gift of God, not uh, least. There's no works. For by grace are you saved, not of the works that we have done, but by his grace, okay? So by grace are you saved through faith, not that of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. That's Ephesians 2, 8, 9. Ephesians 2, 10 says, but we are created unto good works. So I, as a Christian, I should do good things. I should quit doing the bad and doing the good. How, how do I do that? Same way I got saved, by faith. Faith, faith, faith. Faith is everything. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Resolution will never do it. I say that because we're on the second of the year, and many people uh, very sincerely made a New Year's resolution, but uh, they've already broken, and it's the second. By faith, I can do it. I've been doing that lately. It's been working for me. When, when I say so, I'm just all I can tell you is what works for me. I, I don't know. I don't know uh, if it'll work for you. It works for me lately. When the devil trying to direct me in the wrong way. How many of you the devil tries to direct you in the wrong way every day of your life, huh? Man, well. Just say, by faith, I commit it to you. Wow. I got new people watching me today on Facebook. Hi, new people. <laughs> See, I got some old people on there and some new people. But anyway, anything can be done. You can be saved by faith, remember, by grace, unmerited favor. We are saved by grace through faith, amen. And then, to be kept from sin, I can only do it by faith, not by resolution, not by New Year's resolution, but by faith. Now, let's look at our, get a Bible reading chart. I gave them out at church Sunday on the 31st. It's a blue one like this. I print them 5,000 at a time. And it takes you 80 hours to read through the Bible. You say that's too long. That's just 14 minutes a day for the average reader. So you get you a chart. They're on the back table. I give them out to everybody in church Sunday, and you read it. And and we are in uh, we're in Matthew chapter two today, okay. 
And I think, what, where are we in Genesis? What tells me right now in here? January. Three to five. Genesis three to five. Matthew two. Let's go to Matthew two. Matthew, first book of the New Testament. Reading the new and the old each day. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are coming to worship him. Now, you see, there was all kinds of prophecy in the Old Testament that told of the Savior that was coming. We've just got over the remembering, of course, Jesus wasn't born on the 25th. Uh, day of December and I don't know when he was born I know he was born and he was born he came into this world Christ Jesus came into this world to save sinners like you and I um, so anyway they they had came to see him and when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together he demanded of them where Christ should be born and they said unto him in Bethlehem of Judea for thus it is written in the prophets. See, it was told in the Old Testament where Jesus was going to be born. There was a lot of prophecy in the Old Testament about Jesus, of how he would be born, where he would be born, uh, how he would live, uh, how he would die. That's all prophesied in the Bible, you see. And we have the road map of, of history here. And verse 6, it says, And thou, Bethlehem, is written by the prophets, and thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor. They shall rule my people Israel. Verse 7. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child, and when ye have found him, bring uh, me word again, that I may come and worship him also. Now, did Herod want to worship Jesus? What did he want to do? He wanted to kill him. He wanted to kill him because uh, he was he was power happy. He was he was he was power hungry, like most government people are. Uh, government leaders and presidents and governors and mayors and commissioners and senators and all that most of them they do what they're doing uh, basically most of them are just power happy and they're after money of course the uh, politicians today are at an all-time low in america they have a 12 percent approval rating that's pretty low huh 12 percent approval and that means 88 percent of folks don't don't like the way politicians are uh, there are some that call Washington now the swamp. They want to drain the swamp. And uh, they have different thoughts like that. So uh, uh, that's, what, uh, that's what we've got. So Herod, we today are in the typical tradition of politicians. They were power happy and they don't want to, uh, they, the city of Daytona Beach now. Daytona Beach does not want to give up the power over the homeless first step shelter. And they've delayed it now for several years. And they're, they're continuing. The shelter should have been built. If they had done what the First Step Board had said almost a year ago now, to do a certain way of construction and build, it would have been built. It hadn't even started being built now. They fired the architect. They got rid of all the old plans. And uh, because Daytona Beach wants, they're power happy. They want to be in control. And uh, yeah, they've got a, con they've got the control and the shelter. I'm not even, I I'm not going to commission meetings anymore. I'm not going to first step board meeting. I tried to help all I could. Uh, they don't listen to common sense. If they listened to common sense, it'd been built already. But here we got 33 degrees coming the next two days. The shelter ought to have been built and it even started being built. And they had a groundbreaking here a couple of weeks ago. What a joke. 
how you gonna break ground to build something when you ain't even got a uh, you you, uh, you you ain't even got a drawing of what it might look like, much less a plan. Anybody, anybody, you know anything about building? You know you can't you can't start digging, put footings in that until you got working drawings. Amen. They don't even have conceptual drawings. They had them, they ditched them. And here we are, over a year later. So, I'm out of that. I told the politics. I told. I, I tried to be involved. I tried to do what I could, and and they don't care. They don't want to listen. I'm not going to any more commission meetings. I'm not going to any more first step board meetings. Um, they could have had it done. Why is it? It's because of uh, power. Power. They told him each says, "We're gonna have. We got the power. We won't relinquish our power." That's the way Herod was. Bring me Jesus so I can worship him. Well, he wanted to kill Jesus. In fact, uh, uh, it was proved that he wanted to kill him. Now, by the way, uh, when the wise man came, the uh, the manger scenes you see, they're not historically correct, you understand. When, when the wise man came, Jesus was probably about two years old. Because when Herod killed them babies, he killed all the ones that were two and under. He didn't just kill the newborn babies. Herod killed all those that were two years or younger because he was power happy. And uh, they, uh, they didn't want to. And that, that's, what this, uh, that's what this world is, is made out of. Everybody, everybody wants to have control. Let me tell you something. Listen, dear friend, here in the church or out there on Facebook, when you finally decide who's really in power, and that's God, you, you'll humble yourself and do things the right way. Yeah. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. We read Genesis 1 and 2 yesterday, 3, 4, and 5 today. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Yeah. I texted that out yesterday on the first day of the year, and I texted out not only Genesis uh, 1, 1, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. I, I texted uh, uh, John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, Jesus. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That's Jesus. All things were made by Him, and not anything was made that was made. Jesus. That's what it said, and I texted that out yesterday. And until you recognize that God's in control and Jesus is the great creator and, and Jesus has all the power and God has all power and he'll come and rule and reign. And now we, we sing the Messiah. I listen to it here uh, around Christmas time. The uh, London Philharmonic Orchestra, uh, the, this, this last Christmas here now, he's been there for many years as the conductor. I guess they liked him a lot. They now made him the president of that organization, and he's resigned as conductor. But the Messiah, it's two and a half hours. By the way, the Messiah, you know, they, they play it at Christmas because I think they think you get better crowds at Christmas. But the Messiah, when it was first written, and for many years uh, it, was, it was remembered uh, uh, at the remembrance of Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. That's what the Messiah, that's what Handel wrote it for. It wasn't really written uh, for the birth of Christ. You, you listen to him. Uh, you, you listen to the different things in there. It's marvelous. And I'll, I'll show it here one time if I get anyone. Uh, watch it for, and I'll put it on today after we eat. You want to stay and watch it and stay out of the crowd? You stay and watch Handel's Messiah. I have it right on here for you. You want to stay and watch it. And I'll even give you coffee to drink while you're watching it. And I'll give you, give you a cupcake, amen? And uh, give you a piece of pizza, maybe. <laughs> Better than sitting at the bus stop, amen? <laughs> Better... Better than going to get some lousy food and people throwing you out won't let you take anything with you. It's better than that, isn't it? <laughs> I, oh, I ain't going to mention no names now. <laughs> yeah. King of kings, hallelujah, hallelujah, and Lord of lords, hallelujah, 
Hallelujah. I can't sing like them singers at the London Philharmonic Orchestra, but you'll hear them uh, after we eat here today. By the way, you know what you're eating today? You're going to get Disney World turkey leg. You know what you got to pay for that Disney? Same, same, same turkey legs because the guy that sells them to Disney World, he gives them to me. A Christian friend of mine that, that runs Crofton Meats in Tampa, he sends them down to me anytime I want them. I should ask him more. You'd like them more. I've been getting them lately. Today you're going to have, if uh, if you'd be at Disney World today and get this turkey leg, it'd cost you eleven seventy five. And all they do is they put it in a, a in a napkin and hand it to you, and you give them eleven seventy five. Huh? <laughs> no, they're big turkey. No, they're big turkey legs. I mean, that's fill you up. Them turkey legs are big. You can't eat a. Uh, you're a pretty good man, a pretty good woman. You could chomp down that whole thing. Uh, but you'll get one today. Plus, mashed potatoes and gravy, and green beans with bacon and onions in it. How about that, huh? A nice dessert and everything. Uh, we treat you right here. And uh, that smoked turkey is good. By the way, just so you get the word out for tomorrow, tomorrow came from Crofton Meats, too. Their, their pride sausage, Uncle John's pride sausage, that's what we're having tomorrow. Comes straight from Crofton Meats. My good friend, Rick Bernardo, one of the best Christians i ever met in my life. I love Rick. He's one of my best friends in the world. And uh, you'd be glad he, he sends it good food. Turkey legs today. Uncle John's pride sausage tomorrow. Amen? Amen. God treats us good. But the best thing you get when you come here is right now when I'm preaching the Word of God. Amen? It'll get you to heaven and to keep you right with God. Amen. All right. Uh, let's go. When they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them. Can you imagine a star? God that made the heaven and the earth, he could have a star lead these wise men, these great rulers from other countries, and lead them to where Jesus was. Amen? Now, how old did we say that, that he was probably when they, when they got there? About two years old, probably. Because Herod, he killed all them babies two years old and younger. It wasn't like you see. Uh, it wasn't probably it wasn't December 25th. And it, it wasn't a little baby in a manger with them wise men there. It was in a manger uh, that he was born. But when the wise men got there, he's about two years old. You want to try to do it, study the Bible for what it says. Amen. Amen. Stood. Over where the young child was. He didn't say baby. He said young child. is a two-year-old. She wasn't a young baby anymore. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. Now you see these people. They knew prophecy. And they say the Savior has come. Now why did he come? It, it, it wasn't just about being a baby in a manger. Amen. It was about being a Savior on the cross. Amen. Emmanuel, God with us. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. Woo, isn't that good? That's my Jesus, my Savior. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. Verse 11. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child. It wasn't a baby again. It was a young child, two years old with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. He's the only one worthy of worship. Some people want to go to go to Rome and go to the Vatican and and worship the Pope. Don't worship him. He's just a man. Let me tell you this. I'm not going to go into railing on the Pope today, but let me tell you this. You Catholics out there on Facebook, any of the Catholics that are here, ain't no hope in the Pope. There ain't no hope in the Pope. I guarantee you that. And fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned of God, here it is. 
warned of God, warned of God. If you're lost today, listen to God. He's warning you you're going to go to hell if you don't get saved. He warns everybody. God's not willing any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. The only reason anyone's going to go to hell is because you won't listen to the warn warning of God, and you won't repent, and you won't get saved. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, because he's a liar. He didn't want to worship the Lord. He wanted to kill him, because he wanted to be in power, like the politicians of today, the presidents, the governors, the mayors, the commissioners, the power happy. They sit up there like statues on their, in their ivory palaces and look down on people and won't listen and think they, they, they I mean, and by the way, America's getting wise to these politicians, you know. 12% approval rating, 88% don't trust them anymore. They go on the same way. They don't change. They don't change federally. They don't change state-wise. They don't change locally. They give you a bunch of baloney. I ain't listening to it anymore. Verse 13, And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Why, why don't you get in touch with God? You know why you're not in touch with God? You love your wickedness. You love your evilness. You hardly even know there's a God. How are you going to talk to God when you live in sin every day? You want, you want to get a hold of God, get saved. And if you are saved, get right. God will take you everywhere. You got to listen to God. I tell people every day that are going the wrong way, and I say, why don't you listen to God? They won't. They're going to listen to themselves and do their own thing. I don't know. I don't know everything, but I do know God, and I can help to get you to know. You get to know him, you wouldn't be walking around in a daze. You walk around like a termite in a yo-yo. You don't know if you're going up or down. Why? You got no contact with God. Maybe you're not saved. Maybe you're confused because you got so much sin in your life. The Holy Ghost can't lead you and guide you. He told Joseph in a dream, Arise, take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt, and be there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Now, now I talked to Joseph. I was telling someone this yesterday. The husband leads a family. I know the Catholics tell you, Hail Mary, Mother of God, full of grace and truth. And they tell you to pray to Mary, which is a bunch of baloney. Now, if Mary was a mother of God and never sinned and all this baloney that Roman Catholics tell you about Mary, why didn't he talk to Mary then? He wouldn't even have to talk to her. She'd be talking to him and telling him what's going on. But she told Joseph, why? You're the head of the house, Mike. I'm the head of the house, my house. Kevin, you're the head of your house. A man is the head of the house. You says, Pastor Varga, you're not politically correct. I never plan to be politically correct. You want to listen to a bunch of weirdos and lesbians and queers and, and uh, God-haters? Go ahead, be politically correct. I'm not going to be. I want to be biblically correct, amen? As far as I read the Bible, the man's the head of the house. That's why the angel talked to Joseph and not Mary. That's why a lot of women are messed up. They don't listen to their husband. I ain't mad at you. I ain't mad at you. I'm not mad at you. <laughs> Tell Lisa, I'm not mad at her. My dear wife, Barb, I'm not mad at you, honey. <laughs> By the way, most of America and the weird country we live in don't believe that today. They don't believe it. In fact, next time you go to a restaurant, just do this. When you go to a restaurant and there's a guy and a girl going to the restaurant, you see who's walking in front, the woman. 
See who's pointing to where they're going to sit down. The woman. Oh, no. No. In fact, when you go into a restaurant, when I go in with my husband, uh, as husband and wife, and go into a restaurant, when, when, when the girl comes up to you or the guy that's got the menus, who they look at and talk to? The woman. Because women lead men around by the nose all over this country. That's why it's so screwed up. <laughs> I'm too old. I'm, I'm too old to worry about if you like what I say or not. I'm just telling you what the Bible says, and I'm just telling you God sent the angel to daddy, not mama, to lead the way. I've never preached that before, but it's true because I just read it out of the Bible, didn't I? He wasn't talking to Mary. If, if Mary was queen of heaven and never sinned, why would he even have to say anything to her? She knows it all. That's so stupid. They say, pray to Mary because uh, uh, Jesus comes to Mary, and if you pray to Mary and you get in good with Mary, she'll help you with Jesus. Baloney. Baloney, baloney, salami. It's wrong. Mary, in her prayer, called a Magnificat. She called Jesus my Savior. She didn't say, son, listen to me. She bowed and humbled herself. And by the way, she bowed and humbled herself to Ju Joseph too. And by the way, Jesus had half-brothers and sisters. Mary had children with Joseph. Though the one child that was of God was Jesus Christ, the virgin born. These new Bibles, when they started changing Bibles, they said, uh, in, in the King James Version, it says a virgin conceived. In, in, uh, uh, in the new versions, when they, and they, they, oh God, they have hundreds of new versions now, but back when they started bringing out new versions, you know what the devil changed right away in there? It didn't say a virgin. It said a young maid conceived. Now, there's a lot of young maids that have been to bed with someone that ain't a virgin. The Bible says a virgin, one that had never known a man, conceived of the Holy Ghost. Yeah, I'm just telling you the way it is. And, and uh, yes, Mary, I was, forgive me, Lord. When I first got saved, I was really mad at Mary. I shouldn't have never been mad at Mary. Mary was a good woman. I should have been mad at the lying Catholics, which I'm still mad at them. Making Mary someone that she isn't, huh? It's the Catholics that are a problem, not Mary. She was a godly woman. She was highly exalted among women, it said, and 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 that she conceived and and was the mother of Jesus. But Joseph was his uh, stepfather, and yet he was married to Mary. So Mary did what? She reported to Joseph. That's why they, I've never preached this before in my life. This is the first time I'm an old man. I've been preaching for 40 years. I've never preached this before. I'm preaching it today. And I don't believe you can prove me wrong. Wasn't this angel talking to Joseph? Gabriel. <laughs> was this Gabriel, you think? I was telling my friend Kyle yesterday that I got it better than Gabriel. Gabriel's just a big shot angel, messenger angel. He can't be a child of God. He's je it, it, The Bible says the angels are jealous of we that are in God's image and we that are his children. Because an angel can't be nothing but a ministering spirit. He can never be a child. He cannot be joint heirs with Christ. All he'll be forever and ever is an angel. There's two kinds of angels, you know. Lucifer and the bad angels, the devil's angels. They're going to be chained in the fires of hell forever and ever. And have other angels to be with. I don't know if they're going to bring us iced tea or whatever. I don't know. I had one preacher say that we'll work in heaven. I don't know. Work is good. I, work, work's not a dirty four-letter word. I like people coming here that are workers. I like Kevin and Sandy. They come in here. They're I like because they're married. I like that. And they'll work. They ain't anything I ask them to do, they do it. They ain't too heavy for light work and too light for heavy work. Some of the others come in here. You don't want to worry. You, you come sit around 
I'm looking around right now. I got a few lazy ones in here right now. You say, is it me? If the shoe fits, wear it. Some folks come in there lazier than a hound dog. Anytime you mention work, they got something to do. They're out the door in a flash. <laughs> Sometimes I'll ask them just to pull their chain. They'll be running. Fast I've seen him move in a long time. <laughs> they out the door and down the highway. Amen. Well, praise God. This is a reading for today, second chapter. What time is it? Where's my watch? Did I leave my watch at home? Oh, my Lord. My brand new Christmas watch. I used to go like that. Left that home. You know what I did? My two favorite Christmas presents. I got a nice pocket knife from Billy Joe, a Harley Davidson pocket knife. You go over it like that. Not sharp and expensive. He gave it to you. Billy Joe gave me the knife. And my, my daughter, Jennifer, gave me the watch. At this moment in time, I've misplaced both of them. <laughs> My two favorite Christmas. That means I'm getting old. <laughs> I got my watch. I got my knife. I just reach up if I get my knife. It ain't my pocket. I think I know. I cut a box open with that knife. I just got to remember where I was when I cut that box open. Because I get back to that spot, I'll find my knife. <laughs> it was in my house. Anyway, let's go on. But when Herod was dead, sometimes wicked people die. Good people die, bad people die. Behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph. Here he come, he come back. It, uh, and Kyle, it might have been, it might have been Gabriel, possible, because he was a messenger angel, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother. He just said his mother, didn't say, and take Hail Mary, Mother of God, Queen of Glory, never have sinned. He didn't say that, did he? You won't find that in the Bible. Only place you'll find that is in Catholic tradition. Catholics take a lot of folks to hell. And and go into the land of Israel, for they are dead which sought the young child's life. Herod was dead. And he rose and took the young child and his mother. Again, just just his mother. Just she was a chosen one, his mother. She wasn't God. She didn't have an immaculate heart, like the Catholics said, immaculate heart of Mary, sinless. Said she never had. I mean, the, the, the Bible says that Jesus had brothers and sisters. So who are you going to believe, the Catholics or the Bible? I'm going to believe the Bible. The Bible said uh, that Jesus had brothers and sisters. The Catholics said that she had a pure, immaculate heart, and she was transported to heaven. That's all a bunch of baloney. That's all fairy tales. And came into the land of Israel. And when he heard uh, that uh, Archelaus did reign in Judea in, in the room of his father, Herod, son, and he was afraid to go thither, notwithstanding being warned of God in a dream, he turned aside into the parts of Galilee. And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled. Here it is again, fulfilled, prophecy fulfilled, which was spoken of the prophet, he shall be called a Nazarene. Okay? Because he was born where? Uh, he was born in Nazareth. That's where he was born. He would be called a Nazarene. And and then we're, th we're through with chapter 2, so our time's gone. Read the Bible through in a year. Chapter 2, that was reading for today. I helped you with that. Go back in the Old Testament. Get your Bible reading chart. It's here somewhere. Here it is. Bible reading chart from the table. Read through the Bible in a year. Start today. You see, should I go back and read? Don't worry about yesterday's. Get today's. Get today's. You're going to get, get the $100? I'll give you $100. Anybody reads through? I mean, you got to read it every day. Don't come lying to me. You come lying to me trying to get a $100 bill. God might strike you dead, so I wouldn't try to do that. But I'll give you $100 if every day, I'm not talking about, I ain't talking about doing it in two days. I'm talking about read the Bible every day, every day, every day, every day, every day, every day. On schedule. Read it. 
You come up to me on the 31st of December and say, I've read it every day, Pastor. And I'll present you with a clean, crisp $100 bill. And it won't even be counterfeit. It'll be real. Amen. <laughs> I hope you say, New Year. I'm looking for the greatest year ever to serve God. I hope you are too. I hope you're saved. I hope you're saved. Let's pray. Now, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the Word of God. Second chapter of Matthew reading for today. Help us, Lord, to love you and that Genesis is so wonderful, the creation story and all about the beginning. Genesis is such an important book of the Bible. Help us to read it and study it and believe it. You say, preacher, I'm saved. You're here in church. You're here in church. You say, pastor, I'm saved. I'm a born-again Christian. I'm 100% sure if I died, I'd go to heaven. Would you slip your hand up? I know I'm saved. All right. Some do, some don't. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. Listen, dear one. You say, Pastor, I'm not sure if I died I'd go to heaven, but I'm concerned about it. Would you pray for me that I could be saved? I'm not sure I'm going to heaven. I need you to pray for me. Just slip your hand up here. And, but yes, 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 I see your hands. I see your hands. We've got several hands raised. God bless you. May put your hands down. How about out there on Facebook? Some of you don't know you're saved. You know if you're saved or not. Now we're going to pray the sinner's prayer together here in church and out there in Facebook. You need to repent. You need to see that you can't save yourself and put your trust in Jesus Christ alone. Pray this prayer with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me. You shed your precious blood on Calvary's cross and rose from the grave the third day. The best I know how with an honest heart, I turn from my sins, receive Jesus as my Savior. Thank you for saving me right now. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. Here, here in church, say, I prayed it today, preacher, and I meant it. I asked Jesus to save me, and I did it by faith. I asked Jesus to save me, and I meant it. Would you slip your hand up? Say, I did it today. Yes, yes, yes. God bless you. Lord, thank you for these. Been several have raised their hand in church. I hope you have out there in the Facebook audience also. Wonderful Savior. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, not to just be a baby in a manger and, and a two year old that the wise man came to save, but a Savior that died and shed his blood and rose again. I'm glad for these that have been saved today. Thank you for it. Facebook, I'm cutting off here. We'll talk to you tomorrow morning. God bless you. You have a good day.